Star Wars, Rogue One, just got back from seeing it, and let me tell you, it's about 4.45 in the morning, Central Standard, whatever time. I had to make a video review, because I hadn't made one for a movie in a minute, what with school and schooling being close to over, or over now. So, long story short, uh, it was freaking amazing. Go see it. Like, it was great. Uh, people are even saying, like, obviously it blows the other prequels out of the water, like, hands down. Like, episodes 1, 2, and 3, what? No, Rogue One. Disney's been surprisingly killing it with the brands and names they own, and this was not a disappointment at all for me, personally. Now, there were some, like, small detractions here or there, but few and far between overall. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like, I, I knew vaguely of the story of Rogue One and the Squadron and all that, which... I mean, this isn't this isn't anything new for any of us. Uh, the characters might be in the situations, and the specific details involved are kind of new, but the overarching, like, going for the Death Star plans, and that's how in Episode 4 they have the plans, because there was this big old, like, final mission hoorah that went to go get it, and, like, people died, and it was, like, terrible. It was the war, and... I love how that's emphasized in this film, so let's get right into it. No spoilers, I'm gonna, like, yet, I'm gonna have to touch on something at the end of this. Basically, pros. The story, it was great, uh, for me anyway. I liked the progression that it took, and it, at first I got a little bit worried, because the beginning kind of started up, and I kind of knew which direction it was going, and I was worried at the pacing, but then the story picked right back up, and all the way from point A to point B in the film. Uh, it was all very canon. Uh, characters in there, some recognizable, some that were new and all that. There was good character establishment, even for the characters that you didn't know that well. Like, even characters that are from, like, the, uh, that were from the Clone Wars, that might be from that new show from Disney, uh, the Star Wars Rebels and all that. Um, you don't have to have watched the, any of that to get the main overarching story that's going on. Granted, it helps because there's plenty of references abound in this. Um, even if you just watch it as a film by itself, if you've never seen Star Wars and you watch Rogue One, there's still, I always try to look at a film, especially in a series or franchise, like how would it stand by itself? And this did really well. I loved, loved the directing and the composition of the shots in this film. Everything from outer space to more uh, personal enclosed spaces and all that. I really enjoyed the, um, similar to, if I can finally get a review out for Luke Cage, how the composition of that show is just, mwah, just very well produced, directed, and all that. Uh, it just works out really well. I don't know what it was about it, because I, I mean, I enjoyed Force Awakens, and I can tell that it's going to be more complete when, uh, episodes 8 and 9 are completed, but for this to be a standalone Star Wars story... I felt like I was in the universe, it, it tied into the rest of the universe, it was all canon, there were connections made, characters established, characters that I already knew, and it just all worked out very well. Composition was great. The score, of course, was great, it was classic Star Wars. It, I wasn't 100% if it was a rehashing of before, new stuff, or exactly what percentage was here and there, but either way it worked out really well. I don't know if it was just the theater I was in or that I saw it in standard, though I kind of am wishing I saw I might go see it again, but in RPX. The volume felt like it could have been louder. Maybe that's just me. I know some films have like really bad audio mixing, like some of the some of the uh, poorly produced ones. So maybe it's just me. But yeah, it's a great film. Go check it out. Now, all that aside, like I so said, those main plot points. Uh, some cons. Um, a few moments of dialogue here or there. Only a couple in the movie where I had a little bit of an issue with it. Just a little bit. Uh, there were a lot of cliches, and of course you knew like everybody was going to die, but I mean, it was every single time somebody died, it was like, this person, I should hold them in my arms as they die. And that happened a few times. I'm like, I get the emotional investment of it, but it was like, come on. Like, I, I don't know. I guess it fit. It wasn't unnecessary. It was just, I'm so used to seeing certain film cliches that when I see them rehashed again... Uh, here we are. Um, so yeah, very few cons, to be honest. Uh, now, this next following part is going to be spoilers. Hard to do for a film that's a prequel, but here we go. The part that absolutely completed this film for me, and I just, I don't know, like, going to the film, there were some great moments. It was a, It's a war story. You know, every, you know almost all the rebels are going to die. Every character that you're going to meet on screen is basically going to meet their end one way or another. So there was that emotional detachment, but at the same time, I still kind of grew fond of them and watched their just their progression and 
all the, this film's like major theme is sacrifice and all for the sake of like hope and propelling on the story so they even had it the Re rebellion even had a chance uh, by the time that a new hope uh, arose but i gotta tell you they nailed the overall feel of like it felt like a, even though it's star wars and lighthearted um it was a it was gritty it was down to earth it was a bit of more of a a war story than the other ones are it was just in the the empire is kind of like full force like they rule everywhere iron fist and the rebellions it's a small little faction trying to fight back the i'll get back to my topic these the absolute scene that took the took it all for me that brought this movie home that's the reason i'm gonna go see it again in theaters and buy it the day it comes out is um there are two darth vader scenes in the entire film both of them are pretty awesome one of them has a slight little bit of cheesiness in the dialogue but just the overall power that he exudes is completely on point. Um, even when they brought in like Grand Moff Tarkin with the CGI and all that, you'll see the movie, you'll know what I mean. A little bit of CGI then in the movie, but it's like really good, like really good CGI, like actual people. Aside from that point on, there's a scene at the end, or after the uh, Rogue One it succeeds. I mean, they all die, but Rogue One succeeds. They get the Sinnel out, and it goes up to the ships that are all trying to take off. But of course, Vader having already gotten the word and been summoned by Tarkin after Tarkin destroyed the whole city and all that. He comes jetting in with a fucking, oh my god, just one of those big old Star Destroyers and boarding party, right? to the, Just get right to the point. And so they're trying to, like, download it onto this little, like, weird, like, USB floppy thing, whatever, and they've got it, and, like, everybody's panicking. They're trying to run away, getting off the ship, and then there's a moment where the ball drops. And all those guys in those classic, like, weird, um... Uh, syndicals type of like snow shovel hats they're all in that little hull and you start to realize because they're talking about the boarding party now and as soon as as soon as vader said boarding party and he starts going to the ship i'm like holy shit this is about to tie into the to new hope and oh my god they could not have handled that better Ah, oh, it was so awesome because you got to see like vader being like i'm not even that big of a fan of darth vader i like him and all but i have characters that i like a bit more in the series but oh See when the ball drops and he's in the hallway against this whole this whole like squad of people and they're just trying to get this like one little disc out basically out of there and just get it out get get, get the fuck out of dodge and it's you got to see it that that scene to me was the most intense scene on the whole film and I don't know why but the adrenaline started going and just the the intensity of it and you know what's gonna happen but oh my gosh it just made the entire thing I gotta say. If you like Star Wars, go see it. It's great for the story, great for the lore. You see characters both uh, rehashed from previous films, homage to the CGI to bring them to bring them back to life in just the coolest way. And even if you're not a fan of Star Wars, even if you just like good movies, just it's just shot well. It's a fun movie to watch. It's very intense. It's definitely it's definitely a good uh, end of the year. Like, not summer blockbuster, but like, you know, Star Wars and winter, December and all that. So, go check it out. My final rating for Star Wars, uh, I'm sorry, for Rogue One, a Star Wars film a story is, it's honestly a, uh, I'd give it probably a solid 5 out of 5. Like, I know I keep giving those ratings, but when it all comes down to it, the, there weren't any detractions for me that were bad enough to warrant removing anything from it the acting was all set the characters sound the visuals directing the shots the homage the, the, that good combination of old and new it all really worked well for me so i don't really have that many complaints per se it just worked really well and it was a great freaking movie so go see it stay tuned for the next review of whatever movie or television show or whatever that i'll do check out other gameplay my read throughs whatever you want to do Appreciate the support, and stay tuned for the next episode of whatever I make. So, goodbye, travelers.